This is Jeff Weiss with Unit 8 of HRT211 Plant Propagation, and this unit will cover propagation by division and cuttings. So for this week, uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, reading assignments, a couple of chapters in the uh, text, uh, a couple of videos for you to look at. The practice uh, or discussion question uh, is related to the seasonality of cuttings and uh, you should be able to relate to this based on our uh, use of hardwood cuttings during this uh, winter season in the Midwest and our inability to make softwood cuttings because uh, summertime is uh, for many species the best time to uh, make uh, softwood or semi-hardwood cuttings. and. This week's assignment uh, will not be uh, applicable for the College of Lake County students who are taking the lab. Uh, instead, it'll be out there for uh, outside students. And the lab uh, for this unit will involve grafting. And we've uh, done practice and we're ready to go uh, to the orchard to collect scions. and. Uh, uh, make our grafts in the lab next time. So some of the key terms and concepts relating to division and uh, 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 asexual methods of propagation are listed out here and we'll get into uh, them in further detail as we go through this lecture. Your learning objectives are to be able to discuss the differences between sexual and asexual propagation methods. Uh, to define and explain uh, what we mean by adventitious tissues and how they're formed, uh, to describe how stock plants are used and cared for and manipulated in cutting propagation, and to uh, learn the basics of hormone use and other manipulations used to produce plants from cuttings. So division is where we start. Uh, division is a widely used technique, uh, particularly in uh, backyard gardens. And it's uh, arguably the simplest uh, and one of the most widespread e uh, methods of increasing uh, plants through vegetative propagation. Uh, it can be as simple as uh, teasing uh, one plant uh, into several self-supporting ones, uh, such as indicated in the illustration on top. Uh, where irises or other uh, rhizome or clump forming uh, plants are uh, with their own self-supporting root systems are just teased apart and planted separately. Uh, many herbaceous perennials can be uh, increased uh, through um, th this technique and many others uh, such as dahlia illustrated on, on the uh, uh, illustration below uh, can be uh, divided by splitting the stem uh, uh, horizontally and uh, uh, separating the, uh, the, that stem into uh, groups or tubers and planting them separately. Uh, a number of other suckering plants uh, like corallus or privet uh, can be easily uh, divided by simply uh, uh, cutting off the suckers and planting them away from the parent plants. Um, the fundamental uh, point of division is that uh, some uh, uh, material from the crown or a clump of shoots and buds uh, need to be uh, detached and uh, for the most part, these will have uh, roots already associated with them, uh, which will not require uh, a formation or delay for development of adventitious roots. Instead, the uh, plants are already a, a complete package and just need to be teased apart and put into a new uh, separate environment. Now that is to be contrasted with another widely uh, used technique uh, called cuttings. Uh, cuttings are uh, also frequently used for herbaceous perennials, uh, a lot of uh, container pots, uh, notably poinsettias and mums, uh, along with many other house plants uh, and some fruit and nut uh, trees are all uh, uh, good candidates for propagation by cuttings. 
Um, and, and a variety of plant parts can be used to take cuttings, uh, stems, leaves, uh, leaf buds, uh, rhizomes, uh, roots or tubers, uh, depending on the plant, all make good uh, propagation material for cuttings. Uh, but the thing that differentiates cuttings from divisions is that uh, the complete plant is not uh, used. Instead, uh, these uh, uh, parts are, are uh, harvested and then uh, uh, a process of producing new adventitious tissues uh, such as roots or shoots uh, needs, need to be induced. And um, when a plant is harvested for cuttings, uh, uh, they're almost invariably wounded and around the wound site uh, a, a series of, uh, of processes uh, uh, occur in which the uh, tissue forms uh, callus uh, and uh, 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 or scar tissue, it becomes dedifferentiated. In other words, the, t the tissue that was uh, specialized as leaf tissue or root tissue or stem tissue uh, becomes dedifferentiated and turns into uh, uh, meristem tissue uh, once this callus or scar tissue has been formed. And then that um, uh, dedifferentiated tissue uh, re-specializes and develops into the new uh, adventitious plant parts that uh, um, become the eventual cuttings. So the um, use of cuttings uh, goes back to a, uh, a concept that is uh, applicable in, in, in many uh, parts of many plants which is called total potency and that is the ability of the plants to read generate and to develop all of the uh, required plant parts um, from a single part that's been uh, wounded and cut away from the parent. Um, true roots are ones that form from the radical during normal development of seeds and we've covered that in prior lessons. Adventitious roots on the other hand are roots that form from any other part of the plant and those prop roots from uh, corn uh, that were seen in the last, uh, on the last slide are uh, a good example of an adventitious uh, root type. But the development of these adventitious roots uh, uh, determines whether a cutting will succeed or not. So these, uh, the whole goal of making cuttings is to uh, promote, induce and promote the formation of new healthy adventitious uh, um, uh, tissue. So these uh, wounds that we're giving to our cuttings uh, induce these um, the formation of these secondary meristem tissue. Meristems are the generalized uh, tissue from which all uh, specialized tissues and organs uh, 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 develop. And some examples of um, uh, plants that can um, uh, form from uh, leaves include African violets, uh, from buds, uh, many types of uh, plants can uh, uh, develop from buds including uh, grafts, uh, bud grafts from fruit trees which um, uh, we will study in a, fr in a future lesson, uh, from bulb tissue and we've already uh, uh, scored and scooped uh, bulbs in our lab uh, with the goal of inducing formation of offsets or new uh, uh, um, um, uh, adventitious stems uh, and roots and tubers are also frequently used. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, tubers from potatoes are known as seed potatoes. Um, most of, uh, almost all of the uh, propagation of potatoes takes place from uh, from seed which is uh, the cut up tubers of the potato plants. Um, from stem cuttings uh, there are a couple of uh, different types. Um, the straight cut is made right through the uh, uh, through the stem 
uh, a mallet cut includes uh, some tissue from the uh, uh, from the uh, material above the twig that was taken, and a mallet cut uh, is across the uh, uh, the the branch from which the twig is a tri twig is harvested. Um, but all of these uh, uh, methods and techniques uh, require formation of adventitious tissues to complete the uh, development of a new plant. So um, moving on to a little more information on stem cuttings. Uh, the uh, basics of successfully um, preparing a cutting is to locate a node and to make a clean sharp uh, cut uh, below that node and that node will uh, when um, exposed to the correct conditions of, uh, of a moisture and, and um, uh, rooting media uh, will um, first form callus tissue and then begin to uh, develop uh, adventitious roots. And then um, on the upper part of the cutting, uh, a second node, uh, one which will uh, support um, leaf and bud formation uh, is necessary. And uh, those are the primary requirements for cuttings, is uh, a node for uh, um, root formation below ground and one or more nodes above ground for formation of, of, uh, of leaves. Uh, polarity is important. Uh, cuttings have two ends, a proximal end, that's the part closest to the uh, base of the plant or to the roots, and the distal part. Um, uh, cuttings will not uh, develop properly if they are uh, stuck uh, by the distal end. And uh, another uh, uh, fundamental principle of cuttings, uh, now this comes into play with uh, uh, softwood and uh, semi-hardwood cuttings, uh, where um, uh, leaves are uh, on the cuttings. Uh, it's important to realize that uh, these cuttings will need a balance uh, between the amount of foliage and the amount of roots. So uh, when making new cuttings which have no roots, uh, common practice is to trim the leaf surface area in order to avoid uh, uh, demanding too much uh, uh, water and nutrients from roots that either, either haven't started uh, forming yet or are insufficient to handle the load imposed by the foliage. So what uh, you see in the course of development of cuttings are first uh, the formation of, uh, uh, of uh, scar tissue uh, where the wound seals over and uh, forms uh, a thickened area uh, uh, over the um, periderm called callus. And uh, in time, the cells near the nodes begin to form adventitious roots. So in the, in the um, photo on the left, you see all three stages, uh, uh, wound periderm, callus formation, and adventitious roots uh, forming on these uh, uh, elderberry cuttings. And here's some more uh, illustrations of these stages. Um, callus development shown on the in, on this lower uh, uh, left photo. Uh, adventitious uh, uh, roots beginning to form and then uh, in the case of the uh, uh, illustrations on the right, uh, formation of new shoots and, uh, and leaves from the cutting. Um, Success in making cuttings is uh, uh, promoted by uh, the use of auxins. Uh, two of the common, uh, commonly used auxins are IBA, indole-3-butyric acid, uh, and NAA. Um, these materials are formulated as liquid dips or powders and applied to the base of cuttings in order to promote uh, adventitious rooting. 
So while uh, auxins are influential in root formation, uh, cytokinins, uh, another uh, hormone, uh, may actually inhibit root formation, uh, but help in promoting or initiating bud and shoot development from leaf cuttings. So the, the key, uh, as in uh, many plant processes, is the balance uh, between uh, uh, competing hormones and high oxen, low cytokinin uh, levels uh, favor adventitious root formation and stem cuttings. The propagation environment for uh, making cuttings is important. Uh, uh, much more important in the case of uh, uh, leaf cuttings and, and uh, uh, softwood cuttings than in the case of hardwood cuttings. Uh, but in these environments, uh, the uh, use of mist and fog uh, will uh, reduce the amount of heat load and uh, uh, potential damage to the uh, cuttings from, uh, from excessive heat and from loss of, uh, of water through the uh, leaves. Um, so this uh, photo on the on the right illustrates a uh, misting system in action at the Chicago Botanic Garden, uh, but there's other uh, ways of accomplishing the appropriate humidity for your cuttings. Um, um, covers can be uh, put over the uh, over the cuttings, such as in this lower um, left illustration, and uh, uh, the idea is just to maintain a uh, uh, a, a, a level of high humidity uh, to uh, reduce the uh, strain on the plant. Um, bottom heat also promotes uh, a rapid or more rapid development of adventitious roots and this can be accomplished uh, uh, in the greenhouse by either using heating pads or um, uh, wires running uh, through the uh, propagation tables uh, that will uh, heat only the, um, uh, the, the media uh, where the roots are growing. After rooting, it's time to uh, stick your rooted cuttings in a pot and place in a nursery uh, so that they can continue to develop. Uh, some uh, species uh, are difficult to root either because they have uh, uh, hormone inhibitors uh, or other uh, uh, factors uh, that will um, inhibit uh, uh, formation of adventitious roots. Um, hazelnut is uh, one plant that I work with. Uh, that's a good example. It's uh, very difficult to root from cuttings, uh, but there are other methods to uh, uh, get uh, uh, hazelnuts uh, propagated by uh, vegetative methods uh, and uh, they can easily be grown from seed uh, or uh, can be um, increased from harvesting suckers or from uh, layering and we'll be demonstrating layering in Unit 9. In commercial uh, uh, operations that use uh, propagation by cutting. Um, the use of stock plants uh, is very important. So um, stock plants are sources for large numbers of cuttings um, that can be used uh, ideally um, over and over again as the, and they're kind of babied. Uh, but some of the characteristics that are important for uh, stock plants are that they represent an ideal phenotype in other words, they display all the characteristics that are uh, desired from the, uh, from the plant. Um, secondly, that they are in uh, a, a, an appropriate stage of juvenility. Uh, usually the more uh, mature parts of, a, of a, uh, a plant are less likely to produce good viable cuttings. And uh, third, very importantly, uh, they should be free from pathogens. Uh, any um, pathogen that is uh, infecting the, um, the stock plant will almost certainly be uh, communicated through the cuttings 
and uh, will either decrease their value or cause uh, or promote uh, disease transmission between the grower and the purchaser of the plants.